Welcome to a new short series I'm calling Bite Size. And today, in this Bite Size segment, I'm looking at the 8088 and 8086 chips and their bus sizes. Megahertz is the speed of the clock circuit that drives the CPU. The clock is to a computer what a, a metronome is to a beginning piano player. It sets the pace for the system. There's another characteristic you need to know. The data path. The 8088 has an 8-bit data path. Now, 8-bit data path means that the doorway to the outside motherboard and expansion circuitry is only 8 bits wide. As the CPU can only read or write 8 bits of data at any instant in time. Think of the data path then as the width of the CPU's front door. Consider, for example, an 8 MHz 8088 versus an 8 MHz 8086. The only difference between the 8088 and 8086 is that the 8088 has an 8 bit data path, the 8086 has a 16 bit data path. Now, both the 8088 and 8086 have 16 bit registers, so a programmer could issue the same command to load 16 bits into either one. That will take twice as long on the 8088 as the 8086, because the 8086 can do it in one operation, while the 8088 takes two. Note what's going on. Although they're both 8 MHz computers, the 8088 machine computes more slowly for some operations. Now, you can see that the 8086 is a faster, more powerful chip than the 8088, but did you know that the 8088 was released later than the 8086? And here's why. When the 8086 was first released in 1977, it was one of the first microprocessors with a 16-bit data path. Almost every popular microprocessor-based computer available at the time was based on a CPU with an 8-bit data path. As the CPUs all expected 8 bits, Whenever they read data and provided 8 bits when they wrote data, the motherboards of computers in those days contained enough circuitry to transport 8 bits around. Now the 8086 looked good on paper, but consider the bad side of the 16-bit CPU. It requires a 16-bit motherboard. An 8086's motherboard must contain enough circuitry to transport 16 bits around, and so could be twice as expensive as an 8-bit board. That put the 8086 at an economic disadvantage. So the people at Intel said to themselves, how can we offer the power of the 8086 and still keep the motherboard prices down? And so they built the 8088 a year after the 8086's release. Inside, the 8088 is identical to the 8086. The only difference is in the size of its front door. That's the path that the 8088 uses to transport data in and out of the chip. As it's only 8 bits wide, motherboard designers could easily adapt existing designs to the new chip. As a result, the 8088 enjoyed a moderate amount of success from 1979 to 1981. Of course, after IBM released the PC in 1981 based on the 8088, moderate eventually changed to amazing. <laughs>